This video is going to show you how to add a new asset inside Business Central. There's an assumption that you have recorded the purchase of the assets to a clearing account in the general ledger and we're going to use a journal process to add those into the fixed asset subledger. So we're going to create an asset card and we're going to add depreciation books to that and create the acquisition journal. In this video, I'm not going to go into the underlying setups that are involved with fixed assets. You can see some of my other fixed asset videos if you want some more information in that space. So let's go over into Business Central and create the transactions. Let's look for fixed assets. And this brings up the list view of all of the assets I currently have in my system. You can see by the flag on the right hand side that three of these I've acquired, meaning I set up the card and processed all the journals, and three of them I haven't. Let's create a new asset. Click New. Enter a description. My numbers are defaulting, so it's just going to assign the number once I've entered some basic information. I'm going to select from my classes and select a subclass. The combination of class and subclass drives your GL posting in the background. You may optionally use location codes if you have them set up in your system and you can record serial numbers as appropriate. You can assign responsible employees, again set up first and then assign them. And further down the track you may need to come back to the cards to an activate or block as needed. We're then going to come down to the depreciation book. By default, you see it as a block on the page for the depreciation book. If you go to add more depreciation books, it will change your view into a line view so that you can see what books you've assigned down the page. So it's popped in my accounting book by default and I can choose my depreciation method. So straight line is going to give you an even amount for the each period for the life of the asset. Declining balance 1 and 2 will take the percentage of the asset to be depreciated during the year and spread them. Declining balance 1 will spread it evenly per period and declining balance 2 will take the greatest amount in the first period of the financial year and the smallest amount in the last period. Over the course of a financial year you will get the exact same result at year end. These two methods operate so that in the first part of ownership of the asset it will use declining balance because that would give you the greater depreciation amount. At the point that the value of the declining balance depreciation would be less than if you use straight line, it will switch and use straight line for the remaining part of the asset. User defined gives you the option to define the uh, amounts per period and manual is um, that you will manually post journals for depreciation against this asset. Manual is also what you would select for any assets that you don't want to depreciate such as land. So choose your depreciation method and put in your depreciation starting date. And then you've got options about which fields you fill in. You could choose to do it based on depreciation years. You could put in an ending date. You could put in a declining balance percentage if you were doing declining balance. You could also personalise your window. And look at other options. So you could bring in straight line percentage if you wanted to do a percentage amount rather than the number of depreciation years. The most common way of doing it for a straight line method would be a number of years or using a straight line percentage. So I'm just going to put in a straight line percentage of 25%. Now the other field to note is this final rounding amount field. What that does is that um, gives you a limit as to where your depreciation will end and particularly important if you're using a declining balance method. So when you use declining balance you can get into the situation where you know, there's only a few dollars left to depreciate on the asset and you start getting depreciation journals of 10 cents and 5 cents because it's just going on forever. By having a final rounding amount, 
once the value of the asset hits that level, the full amount, the full remaining amount of the asset book value will be taken in that depreciation run. So that just helps tidy up some of those really little balances and you can set that on a book by book basis. Let's add our tax book. I'm going to keep everything the same except this time I'm going to use a declining balance. Declining balance 1 gives me the even amount per period. Same start date using F8 to copy that down. And in this case I'm going to do a declining balance percentage of 33.33. I'm also going to add that final rounding amount to my taxation book. Now we're ready to acquire the asset, so let's look at the transactions that need to happen. To acquire the asset, we need to process a fixed asset journal. Now there are two types of fixed asset journals in the system. We've got a fixed asset journal and a fixed asset GL journal. The difference between them is four transactions that you need to have update your general ledger, i.e. for your accounting book, you use a GL journal, fixed asset GL journal. For transactions that just need to impact the asset and do not impact your general ledger, such as things for the taxation book, you use a fixed asset journal. We're going to use the fixed asset GL journal for this acquisition. I'm going to close my information pane to give me more real estate on the screen. So my posting date, I want to be the acquisition date for the transaction. So I'm going to make that the first of the month. And my fixed asset posting date is going to be the same. Now the difference between these two dates, the posting date is the date it's going to impact your general ledger. The fixed asset posting date is when it's going to update fixed assets. So you may well have an asset that you are adding at a later stage for a posting date that related to a prior period in fixed assets and that is perfectly fine. You can do that. Document number defaults. I'm going to change my account type to fixed asset and select the asset that I want to acquire. By default it comes up with my accounting book code. I'm going to select it as an acquisition type and put in the amount of the asset. So this is a $15,000 vehicle. This duplicate and depreciation book gives you the option to say actually it's the same acquisition value so also include it in the tax book. If your asset was going to be a different acquisition value in the tax book then you would process it as its own journal in exactly the same way but through a fixed asset journal. Um, assign department code as appropriate. This is vehicle for sales and any other dimension codes that you've got set up. Now the key step in here is this button here insert fixed asset balance account and by pushing that it's going to go away and say well you assigned it to this class and this subclass, therefore the GL account that you're offsetting is this one based on those background setups. Once you've got that in, we can just post the journal. Now we need to post the journal for the taxation book. If we go over to our fixed asset journal, we can see that the line has automatically been created from our GL journal. We can adjust any information we might need to in here, and then once happy with it, we post. Now note, because it's the tax journal that's not impacting the GL, we don't have to insert the balance accounts. It's just a single debit or credit journal, one-sided transaction. Go back to fixed assets. And drill into our asset. And we can now see that the acquired flag has, has turned on. And we've got a book value against each of our books in the system. 
And so now you're ready to go ahead and run your depreciation processes. That gives you the basics for adding your assets into the fixed asset ledger. In subsequent videos, I'll show you how to run depreciation processes and dispose of assets. If you're interested in the setup side of fixed assets, please check out some of my other video listings. If you like what you see, please hit the like button and subscribe for future updates.